Welcome back everyone. So this is where we finished. We have our um, our product view here. We were able to sign up, sign in, and that's all great. The first thing I want to do is I want to correct a little mistake I made. In the migrations here in the user table, I set the user table name to be user. It should be users though with an S at the end. That's important. Also, we'll need something else here. We'll need the remember token. Otherwise, we'll get errors. So after doing this, make sure to go to your terminal and run PHP partition migrate reset to reset your migrations and then rerun them with PHP partition migrate like that. And of course, also reseed your database. And after that, if you reload everything, everything should look the same, but now the user table name was updated, which is important. So that's that. And with that, let's get going with the next part of this series. In this part, I actually want to work on the shopping cart so that we are able to add an item to the cart and then click on the shopping cart to see it. I will store everything in the session, so I will store my shopping cart in a session. This has the advantage that it persists if the user navigates around, if the user leaves the page as long as the session hasn't expired yet. And also it has the advantage of allowing anonymous users to well browse our items and create a shopping cart. That's of course something other approaches where we would store our cart in the database would not be able to handle that greatly. That's why I'm starting off with this session based approach. Now Laravel already has session support built in and makes it really easy to work with sessions. I'll have a look at the config folder and then the session file here. And I'll just close some other folders. So in here you can set the default session driver and this is pointing to the environment file, this .env file. And in this .env file, you can set up your session driver, which by default is file, which means that Laravel will create a file in the storage app, excuse me, storage framework folder, and then here at sessions. You see, I already got some files from testing here, but I can get rid of those. And these are the files where Laravel will store your session. Now Laravel has different session storages and you can learn more by simply googling for Laravel session and then checking out their docs. Just make sure to check them out for the latest version 5.2 for example. And here you'll see how to configure it and how to store it. So that's something you might have a look at. You'll also learn that in this sessions PHP file in the config folder, you can set how long a session should be alive in uh, minutes here and so on. So that is some important configuration stuff you should be aware of. The default configuration works for me, so I'm not changing any, anything here. And the first thing I want to start with is that, I'll, well, that I'm able to actually add items to the card. So I'll head over to my routes file and I'll set up a new route here. The new route I'm going to create is a get route. I'll name it add to cart and of course give it whichever path you like. However, it is important to note that this should take a parameter ID because I need to know which item to add to my cart, right? Then I'll configure this route to use my uh, product controller, product controller here. And of course, get add to cart could be a good name for this action in the controller. So for the function handling this, and I'll give this route a name as well. And the name I want to give it here is product add to cart. Of course, choose whatever works for you here. So next in the product controller, I'll add this function. So I'll add my public function get add to cart. And I know that this will get the ID of the product, but I'll also need access to my requests since that will store my session. So I'm going to inject it here. And by adding it as a first parameter here, Laravel will automatically inject me this request object here. And then it will also give me the ID which gets passed through the route as I set, uh, set this up here in my route path. Now in this get add to cart um, 
function here, I of course want to fetch the product which should get added and I'll use eloquent to find it by ID like this. So that's really simple to get this product. And next I want to create or get it into my session. I want to create a card in my session. Now I don't just want to have an array of items in my session. That would be something I don't like. I want to have, oh and here a T is missing. I want to have a real card object in my session. So I'm going to create a new model in my app folder here or in this um, yeah, in the app folder where I have my product and user model as well. Now I'm going to create this by hand and I'll name it cart.php. Now this won't be using eloquent. I'm still copying this just to, well, have a little bit less to type, but I won't be extending model. I'm, as I said, I won't be using eloquent here right now. This is just a normal PHP class here. And this will be the blueprint I use to create a new card and to store my items in this card. Now in this card, I want to have a public field named items, which should hold the individual products. Though it's important to note that with items, I mean group of products. So for example, if I were to add Harry Potter and I add it two times, then I don't want to have two Harry Potter items there. I want to have one group of Harry Potter items. And if I then add a Song of Ice and Fire, a Storm of Swords, then I want to have two items here. One is the Harry Potter group. The other one is the Song of Ice and Fire, Storm of Swords group. And within each group, I'll then still have the items and the quantity and the price, but I want to group them, of course, because I want to present my shopping cart grouped and I don't need three times the same item in there. I need a group of those items with the information of how often it has been added and so on. So that's one thing. On the card level, I also need to have my total quantity and I'll set this to zero initially. And I want to have my total price, which also should be zero at the beginning. Now, the important thing about this card is I will recreate it each time I access it, basically, whenever I add a new item or whenever I get the items. Now, for that, of course, I need to pass the old card to it and then recreate the card based on that old card. I'm following this approach to always have the correct state of this card. And I'll add a constructor function for this so that I'm able to actually pass the old card to it. So in here, I'll first check if old card actually is there, is set, because if I'm creating the card for the very first time, I won't have an old card, of course. If I do have an old card, then I will set items to be equal to old card items. And of course, I'll do the same for the total Oops, the, to the total quantity, if I could type, and for the total price. And if I don't have that, well, then I will simply set this items to be null. However, of course, another way would be to set it to null here and then get rid of this else statement here. So that's my constructor, which allows me to recreate this card based on the old card so that no information gets lost. Next, I'll add a function which allows me to add a new item. And I want to be able to add a new item as well as the ID with which this item should be associated. So I will create a new variable, which I'll name stored item. And here I will just create a new array of the item I want to store basically. And I'll explain this in a few seconds again. I'll set the quantity to zero because it will be incremented in the next step. And I set the price to be equal to item price. And I also set the item itself to be equal to the item I pass in. Now stored item is therefore this group I'm referring to. So I will check if in the items I already have in my card, if those exist or if they are empty. So if this is a new card, I of course won't have any items in my card. But if I do have items, then I want to check if I already do have 
this item I want to add inside of it. I do this with array key exists where I pass the ID and then the array I want to check for this. So I'll check if I already have this item. And if this is the case, then I will set stored item equal to this items and then retrieve it by the ID. So I do have an associative array here. Now I'll add one more line before I'm able to fully explain all of that. I'll then set my items and here I'm accessing a certain element by this ID equal to the stored item. So what am I doing here? I add a new item, okay? And I first configure this new item to well have a quantity of zero, the item price, and then of course the item I want to pass. Now this is an associative array as you can see. And this associative array will identify my group of that item. So I'm always overwriting the item because I only need to store it one time, this part here. I'm not pushing it on an array or anything like that. I'm not keeping a list of items because it's always the same item, right? So therefore, I'm just setting it here. However, then I check if I already have some items in this array or in this object, excuse me, in this card. And if this is the case, I'll next check if in all those objects and all those products I already have in my card, I also already have the item I want to add right now. Now I'm passing the ID of that item here and as I'll later here in this line set up an associative array. So this items is basically an associative array where the key will be the item ID. I can check if this associative array already has the item ID of the item I want to add as a key. This of course would mean that I already have this item in the shopping cart. In that case that I already do have the item, well then I simply set stored item equal to the item I already have in the shopping cart. So I'm overwriting this here basically, this first line. I am completely overwriting it. This line here therefore is used to create a new item if it hasn't been added and I'm doing this anyway because I can overwrite it here if I recognize, oh, I already have this item. And in this case, I have all the information already in the card. And that's what I meant before. I'm not pushing this new item on some kind of array here. I'm constantly overwriting it because I only want to keep each product once because I only need the information once. And then I only want to increase the quantity and price appropriately. I'm not doing this yet, no worries. You're not missing something. I'll add this soon. This line here, is then important because it will access my items, which again is an associative array, access the key of the ID I pass here and store this item at this position. Now, either it's simply, well, overwriting the existing item, so nothing's happening then if you want to put it like this, or it's creating a new entry with the ID of the product I passed in case this product was included in the card before. Then it includes, then it creates a new entry with the key of that being that ID of the past product and stores the item I set up here. So that's what's happening here. And I hope I was able to clearly explain this. Now you would be totally right that this is not working like this because I need to do some other things. Before I pass the stored item, I need to access it, access the quantity field, this field I'm setting up here, and increment it. Because it's zero if I create it the first time, I certainly want it to be one. And if I do have an existing item, well then of course also I want to increase the quantity because I was adding one. I don't just want to do nothing, I want to increase the quantity. And I also want to change the price of course. So I'll do that if I could type here. So price should be the item price times the stored item quantity. So item price is just the price of a single item and stored item quantity is simply how many of such products do we have in the card yet. So let's say we have three times Harry Potter, then this would be three. And since Harry Potter costs 10, 
this would be 10 and we would set the stored item price to 30. And again, stored item is kind of the group of those items. Then as explained, I'm adding this to my array here. And of course, I also need to update the total quantity and price of my card. So total quantity will go up by one as well. And the total price should also be increased by this items price. So of the individual item. So to stick with Harry Potter, it would be increased by $10 since that is the price of the individual book. Good, so that is my card. And that has been a lot of talking, but it is finally prepared. And with that, it's time to actually use it. So I'll go back to the product controller to actually use my card. Right now I'm only fetching the product, but now I can also fetch my old card if I do have one. So I will use the session facade in Laravel. And to do this, I have to add use session at the top here. And then I use the has method to check if, well, this session has a card key. So if the card has been stored in the session. If this is the case, then I will retrieve it with session get. Otherwise, I will pass null. So old, car so old card is either null or the old card. Then I'll create a new card and add this use app card import here at the top. And to this new card, I'll pass the old card. That's what this card model is expecting in the constructor here. So now I have the new card and then I'll call the add method to then add my product and the product ID. And yes, of course, you could just add product and retrieve the ID in the card model. But setting it up this way, I'm more flexible to also add items which don't have the ID attached to the individual model, for example. Then I'll access my request. And here the session, this is a different way and the other way would just be to use session for sage. Just want to show both ways here. So of course you could also replace those here with request session and get rid of the session for sage. I access my request and then the session here to put the cart back into it or into it for the first time if we didn't have it before. And of course, I want to serialize the card I just created. And with that, I can then return a redirect request or response here with uh, the route leading to, let's say, our product index, which of course, if we have a look at our routes file, is our index page. So with that, I'm adding items to the session, hopefully at least, but we wouldn't be able to see this yet, right? So in order to see this, I'll die dump request session. Mm, come on, get card here. So this will quit out of my program to see if this actually works. So I'll reload my page. And if I click here, nothing will happen because I have not wired up this link yet. So I'll do that. I'll go back here and on my add to cart link, I'll add the route product. Uh, what did I call it? I called it product add to cart. So product add to cart. And I also need to pass the ID, which I of course can access on my product item here like this. So now if I reload this page, if I click add to cart, we get this item, we see our card. This looks good. We have a total quantity of one and total price of 10, which fits Harry Potter. We have this items array where we then have this group I was referring to with one actually is the ID of the book here. So that's no default index. Otherwise it would start at zero. This is the ID of the book. We have the item for the detailed information, which you will need to display the title, but we only have it one time and we would have it only one time if we had it added two times and the quantity of this group and the price. So that looks good. So I'll go back and remove this die dump thing here to let this work again. Now, of course, the next step is to create a shopping cart view and to actually display what's inside the cart inside of our application. 